We are joined at this stage by Justice Deepak Gupta, the former Supreme Court judge. Sir, thanks very much for being with us. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, I'll ask you that, that first question. The issue of vacancies in the court, the, the fact that the Supreme Court for years and years was not operating in an optimal condition, that has been rectified. Only one vacancy left thus far. How important is that, A, in sending a message to other courts and B, ensuring that justice is delivered at the very highest court? I think it's very important in a country like India where we have a lot of pendency in every court, right from the Supreme Court to the Mufassal courts, that all posts are filled in. And I think uh, I must congratulate uh, Justice Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India, and his good members of the Collegium for taking this step of appointing nine judges out of the ten vacancies. I wish there was a tenth filled in by Justice Qureshi. That's uh, uh, what I would have felt. I would have been much more happier. But I'm very happy with what the nine have done. Uh, I mean, I mean, these nine, you know, giving representation to women is very, very important. Sure giving representation to the uh, other, I will not say scheduled caste, but uh, other caste is also important. Giving representation to the various states is also important. Yeah. You see, when the when we the Supreme Court decided that there will be a collegium system, yes. one problem which had arisen was that otherwise every high court would have a chief justice from their own high court. Right. So even if you did not come to the Supreme Court, you would be chief justice of your own high court. Now, what is happening is in the smaller courts, you don't end up becoming a chief justice in your own court because uh, they say chief justice should be transferable. And since you belong to a smaller court like I did from Himachal, I was lucky to come to the Supreme Court. But many from small, smaller courts don't come up to the Supreme Court. And I can tell you that the whole of the judicial wisdom does not reside in Delhi and Bombay alone. No, Some of us in the smaller courts are as good as the others in the bigger courts. Justice, you know, uh, if you just go through the profile of some of the judges which I was doing, they have all been wonderful defenders of the essence of our constitution and, the, and, and human rights. For example, Justice Oka, instrumental in providing food, transport and shelter to migrants during the pandemic. We know in India how difficult that situation was. Justice Nath, the Gujarat Freedom of Religion Amendment Act 2021, he held that it did not stand. Uh, it will not apply against couples who enter into inter-religious marriages of their own free will. Uh, Justice Hima Kohli hit out at states for stopping the entry of COVID-19 patients from neighboring states. Justice Nagaratna might well be India's first woman chief justice. Um, a, a huge champion of women's rights in this country. And I think Justice Ravi Kumar, that one quote of his, which I found very interesting, law is long, but life is short. That is so important because things go on forever, unfortunately, in our courts. So the question I'm asking you, sir, just on the basis of these examples, these women and men are all champions of what India should be all about, correct? I, I absolutely agree with you, Swam. I mean, I feel Justice Oka is one of the brightest judges in the country. I have no doubt about it. Uh, Justice Hima Kohli is very good. I've had the occasion of knowing Justice Nagaratnam while working in the juvenile justice field. She has great empathy for juveniles. And I, I have also read her judgments, which are very good. I'm not aware of all the judges, but Justice Vikram Nath has also given this fantastic judgment in Gujarat, which speaks a lot about not only his independence, but also his, you know, his being a liberal judge for fighting for human rights. For me, that is very, you know, I've always said it time and again, courts have two jobs. The Supreme Court has two jobs. One is as an arbiter of dispute between parties. One is as a defender of the human rights of the citizens. In the Supreme Court, where we have Article 32 to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens, it's very important that our judges are equally important defenders of human rights. And I have great hopes and expectations from the nine ladies and gentlemen who have, who have adorned the Supreme Court. Absolutely. And, and let's just hope that that, that defense of, of our fundamental freedoms continues and is championed by the Supreme Court in the manner in which we hope it is. Thank you very much, Justice, for speaking to us. Wonderful to speak to you.